guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we're filming for you another Q&A video. So we're gathering some questions that we've been asked recently in our YouTube comments and also over in our mm -hmm. Facebook community. So if you didn't know already, we have a Facebook community called the Cultivate Health and Beauty Community. So this is where we all come together to chat about all things health, beauty and well-being. So if you're interested in joining that group, you can just search Cultivate Health and Beauty Community in Facebook and request access and we will add you. While we're talking about the Facebook group too, I think we should give a shout out to all the lovely viewers that are in that group. You guys are really cool. We love chatting with you guys, seeing what everyone's eating, sharing tips and things and we got some really good questions in our latest Q&A Tuesday which we held in the group so quite a few of the questions are coming from there some of them also from YouTube so I think we'll get started so we did briefly answer quite a few of these in the group but we thought we could elaborate a little bit in this video okay so the first question here is about MCT oil I saw it in a few of your recipes but I am skeptical because it is a processed food can you explain why we use MCT oil and what its benefits are? So MCT oil, basically MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides. And in our bodies, these act as really quick release energy. And there's only really a couple of steps away from being ATP energy for our cells. So there are heaps of benefits for using MCT oil. Obviously the first is really quick energy. It also helps with appetite control and reducing cravings. It has really great antimicrobial or antifungal properties because it's really concentrated. And I'll go into what exactly it is compared to coconut oil in a moment. There's also been some interesting data on weight loss and weight management with MCT oil. And obviously if you are on a ketogenic diet, it really helps to keep you in that keto state. There were some concerns in the question, I think, about um, the processing of MCT mm. oil. And that was something that I think I was worried about originally as well, because coconut oil we see as a whole food source mm. and then MCT is when coconut oil is mm. processed to so coconut MCTs. oil does naturally contain medium chain mm. triglycerides although the interesting thing is that a lot of it is made up of lauric acid and although lauric acid is healthy for us has many health benefits it doesn't truly act like an mct in the body mm. it has slightly too many carbons in its chain even though scientifically it's looked at as an mct in the body like biologically it doesn't act quite the same mm. So some of the other types of MCT and coconut oil may only, you know, come to perhaps six or 10% of the coconut oil, but they're the ones that are more concentrated in your MCT oils. But yeah, basically when you're buying MCT oil, you're getting those really quick energy release MCTs that are in a smaller proportion in your coconut oil. Mm. But yeah, absolutely. I've heard a lot of brands like cheaper MCT oils, they use yeah. solvents and things to extract the shorter chain Mm. triglycerides so you want to look for a good quality one and that's why we like to use the bulletproof brand they use like a steam distillation method so there's no solvents or chemicals used yeah so there's definitely a lot of benefits to using an mct oil if you're sourcing a good quality one uh, if you're looking at something to help you with weight loss with your mood and energy levels then definitely look into it i personally also use it to kind of up my calories while i'm trying to meet my calorie goals because it mm. increases the fat a little bit in my smoothies and things and keeps them a bit more satiating than you know more fruit based smoothies and things that was a long answer to a short question <laughs> so we had another question that was regarding vegan and paleo so the question was which is more sustainable vegan or paleo so it's a bit of a complicated question to ask it's hard to really say that paleo in and of itself is more sustainable because it will depend on how you practice the diet so you know, some people just see paleo as a diet of eating, <laughs> eating meat and vegetables, but we think of it more as, you know, when you eat the meat, you're thinking about getting, you know, a sustainable, ethically raised meat. So it does come down to how you're really practicing the mm -hmm. diet. But yeah, if you're practicing mm -hmm. how it's intended, going mm -hmm. back to a really locally minded diet and eating a whole range, not just like muscle mm -hmm. meats, like chicken thigh, chicken thigh. Yeah. Um, eating the whole animal nose to tail and also eating a lot of fresh produce that's local yeah and it can be definitely in our opinion more sustainable than a vegan diet yeah if you want to learn more about sustainability of vegetarian and vegan diets i would actually really recommend um, the vegetarian myth by leah keith she really goes into the sustainability of a vegetarian diet and in particular talks a lot about the impact of annual monocrops on the environment and what mm. it's doing to our topsoil so i thought i'd just read out a really good piece from her book. So she starts by quoting this person. So 
The 4.8 pounds of grain fed to cattle to produce one pound of beef for human beings represents a colossal waste of resources in a world still teeming with people who suffer from profound hunger and malnutrition. So then she comments, yes, it is a waste, but not for the reasons he thinks. As we have seen in abundance, growing that grain will require the felling of forests, the ploughing of prairies, the draining of wetlands and the destruction of topsoil. In most places on earth, it will never be sustainable and where it just possibly might be, it will require rotation with animals on pasture. And it's ridiculous to the point of insanity to take that world-destroying grain and to feed it to a ruminant who could have happily subsisted on those now extinct forests, grasslands and wetlands of our planet while building topsoil and species diversity. Mm -hmm. So you're an environmentalist, why are you still eating annual monocrops? Mm -hmm. And I think she makes a really, really great point there. You know, sometimes it seems really easy to say the answer to this problem is just to eat a diet of grains and legumes. Considering how intensive that whole process is and all of the resources that go mm -hmm. into it, even to bring it to our table. And then just the destruction of species diversity and of our soils by just planting these mm. massive crops of one single, often genetically modified Food, plant. Yeah. So, you know, it's not really good for our health. And when you look at some of the arguments, it's potentially not very good for our planet either. So, mm. I mean, it is a complex issue and she goes into a lot of the different so if, aspects. Yeah, a lot of things that you hear thrown around. So about, she's going to talk about things like the water consumption and the waste that comes from the cattle. But. All right, so another question from our Facebook group is how do you become a health coach? So basically, there are a lot of different ways you can become a health coach. There are a lot of different colleges, either in your local area perhaps, or online that offer courses that can range from about six months to over a year. And they teach you the basics of nutrition and how to really implement changes with people because as health coaches, we're not doctors. We don't have a doctor's training, but what we're really there to do is sort of like a personal trainer. We're there to offer accountability and guidance with things like how to stock the kitchen, how to plan healthy meals and all of that stuff. So they provide a lot of guidance on how to do that. And then once you have a certification, it's really about getting out there and marketing yourself, starting up a website, a blog, YouTube channel <laughs> and that's really all there is to it. There's not like any secret. You just have to go out there and do your own thing because you know, it's not as straightforward as potentially going and doing a degree and then getting a job at an office. Although having said that there are places where they hire health coaches perhaps to support doctors and um, different alternative healthcare practitioners so to help with a naturopath maybe to give people that one-on-one -on -one support or even a doctor but other than that you know you're probably looking at doing your own thing so we'll leave more details about health coach training in the description below and then we thought we'd also mention this is a very timely point to mention <laughs> that we actually do offer coaching on our website so if you are interested in working with either of us, we offer two different coaching packages. So the first one is our healthy eating reset. So we can work with you to help get you on track with your diet. In particular, you guys know that we have a paleo approach to diet. So we can help you to restock your pantry and we can also offer you some personalized meal planning to get you on track with creating really healthy meals at home. And then our second program is our total health transformation. So in this program, we're really taking a holistic approach to looking at your entire lifestyle. So we dive into things like sleep, sleep, exercise, of course diet and stress management. So stress management is a big one. So this is like more of our total health reboot. Yeah. And we work with you one-on-one -on -one for three months. So it's a much more intensive program. But if you're dealing with any more long-standing complaints with your health or not feeling too great, that is a program for you. So if you're interested in either of those programs, there's heaps of details on our website. So we'll leave the link below. We'll move on to the next question. <laughs> Can you give me a typical day of paleo that would help me to lose weight? So this is kind of a big question. Perhaps we should make a whole other video showing like mm. the exact meals that we would recommend to start losing some weight. But I think some of our best tips would be to start with a more savory breakfast for, mm -hmm. for starters. Yep. So instead of going straight for fruits or carbohydrate filled breakfast, Go for something more like, say, eggs and salmon, or mm. you could have salmon avocado, like more of those savory, more high protein and fat options. Mm. So that will get your day started more in a fat burning mode rather than getting that carbohydrate up mm. and starting the, and the craving and crash. Yeah. So that will really help with cravings as well as actually stimulating 
your body to burn fat. So I think we also mentioned this in our weight loss video, so we would recommend that you don't go overboard on the nuts. So keeping that to, you know, a little handful each day because nuts can be really high in calories and they're very mm. easy to overeat. They're mm. very Moorish, they're crunchy, they're salty. Yeah. They stimulate our mm. brain in a way that makes mm. us want more. And the other tip I would say is to really fill your plate. Half of your plate should be full of vegetables. Mm. So that's your soluble fiber type vegetables like sweet potato, but then also a lot of non-starchy vegetables. So your broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, mm. zucchini, all of that because not only are they really great for our health, they really fill us up mm. just volume wise. So it will help you to naturally eat a little less calories and get more nutrition as well, potentially. So that's the thing, yeah, even though you're trying to lose weight, your meals don't have to be like this tiny portion. Mm. You can eat a huge plate because mm. half of it's full of beautiful vegetables and that really will help you with kickstarting some weight loss. So if you guys would like a video going through a whole day of eating for weight loss on a paleo diet, let us know below. Okay, so we had another question on our YouTube that was, is this diet possible if you're vegan? So I would probably say it's possible to survive on this diet if you're vegan, but we would not recommend it. Um, I would not recommend it at all. You could do it if you were vegetarian, I would say. You could do it if you're vegetarian because you could eat eggs mm -hmm. and dairy. I'd probably add in dairy as well. Mm. Um, but if you're vegan, then where? I don't agree that you can because on a vegan diet, to get all of your essential amino acids, you're combining things like beans and lentils and rice. Mm. But if you're eating paleo but taking the meat out and then you're not eating grains, you're just eating vegetables. Then all you're eating is vegetables and there's really no way that I can see to get all of the essential amino acids that you need. We just won't get enough protein altogether. Like Where just the, the amount yeah, we just wouldn't be. be. You could do no. it with um Protein powders, I suppose. You would have to do a lot of protein powders. Mm. But either way, I just would not uh, recommend. Yeah, we wouldn't recommend it because there's between the two diets, you would cross over so many restrictions that you would be left with such a restricted diet. And I'd have and to just not ask enough protein. why you would want to do that. Mm -hmm. Because really, paleo, a big part of paleo is recognizing the health benefits of animal proteins and animal products. Mm. Um, keeping in mind that we want to look for ethically raised and local as much as possible. So we wouldn't recommend vegan and paleo together. Sorry. <laughs> A lot of vegan related questions today. So another one from YouTube is, do you recommend drinking bulletproof coffee in the morning on a paleo diet? Yeah, we don't personally drink bulletproof coffee all the time. It's just a habit that you get in and out of doing mm. or a phase. But yeah, if you feel good on it, there's no, we don't have any problem with bulletproof coffee. No. It's a good way to start the day on that ketogenic foot. Yeah. And, if and you have we spoke about MCT oils earlier and there are a lot of health benefits to that. If you have problems with caffeine, perhaps yeah. you'll struggle, but you can also do bulletproof lattes. Yeah, like you can do like a vanilla matcha latte. Oh, so matcha yeah. still has caffeine, but people are doing that with, you know, all kinds of hot drinks. Mm. Yeah, so you don't just have to do bulletproof coffee, you can do like bulletproof other hot drinks. Yeah, because mm. the real idea of bulletproof coffee is just to keep you in a semi-fasted state while giving you a bit of fat. Energy as well, like um, that instant energy and it's, it helps you to think clear and feel more mm. focused in the morning. Or so. um, even if you do find that you react a little bit to caffeine, sometimes a bulletproof coffee is better than a regular coffee, like just a long so black. Fat there. So the fat will slow down the caffeine absorption. I only recommend though to start with like less of the MCT oil. Because it can be like quite rough on the system if you start with a big old tablespoon. So our next question is, do you drink bone broth like a tea slash tonic? So the answer would probably be yes. Yep. So you can drink bone broth kind of in place of any other kind of hot beverage that you enjoy. So it's really nice to wake up and have a cup of bone broth instead of tea or coffee. Very similar to having a cup of tea. But then you could also do it in soups or, mm -hmm. you know, other meals. It's good to like saute vegetables in um, bone broth as well. Yep. I would love to know your opinion on sunscreens and ways to protect the skin from burns. I spend a lot of time outdoors and I'm always under the sun and wearing long sleeves is not an option as I overheat too easily. Thank you. So for sunscreen we really like to use zinc based products so products that offer that physical shield rather than mm. a chemical sunblock. Mm. So we know that a lot of the ingredients in the chemical sunblocks are known endocrine disruptors so they disrupt our hormones which is definitely something that we don't want. 
yeah, there are more and more good quality zinc sunscreens coming onto the market that don't use nanoparticles either. So when we go to the beach, we live close by to the beach, we're using that. But our other point would be that we're not crazy about using a lot of sunblock. Yeah, on a daily basis, I would really only use a bit of sunblock on my face. Mm. Otherwise, I'm quite happy with getting some sun on my arms and legs. But that's I don't go in the sun like enough a lot, to burn. Yeah, enough to burn. So if you were going in the sun, um, kind of like the lady that's asking this question, if you're in the sun all day, mm. yeah, we go with the sun somewhere. Yeah. And the other thing is like with putting it on your face, while we're not worried about getting our vitamin D at the same time, sun on your face each and every day, especially out in Australia, mm. is going to cause some serious photo aging. <laughs> so. <laughs> so our very last question is all about calcium. My question is. How much calcium do we get on a paleo diet? So this is a complex question because when it comes to calcium, there's how much exists in a food and then how much is actually absorbed. And that's determined by a couple of things. So how bioavailable the calcium is and then other things like our vitamin D levels, mm. vitamin K2 and K vitamin levels. So it is possible to get enough calcium on a paleo diet. Obviously it's a bit easier if you include some dairy or high quality dairy products in your diet, mm -hmm. but it's absolutely still possible. But this is something we're going to go into on our next health and beauty series video. Because mm, so, we've gotten a few questions about calcium in particular. Yeah, and it's fair things. enough because when you go paleo and you mm -hmm. take out dairy, there's a lot of alarm in the media and even personally you think gosh where am i going to get my calcium because my calcium it's always equated you know <laughs> calcium equals dairy yeah so so we'll definitely go into that in our next health and beauty series video but those are all our questions that we're answering today we hope that you found them helpful and if you have any further questions or comments then leave them below as always and if you're not already subscribed please hit the subscribe button for more videos and if you enjoyed this one leave us a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye.